This is the Additive Cure Pro Gizmo created by Tony Lyons in the Nuke Survival Toolkit explained in under 8 minutes. So no matter how well you do a key to get those fine hair details back, you will now be able to get those uh, basic green screen uh, hairs to translate over into your backdrop that you're uh, creating without using something like an Additive Cure. This is Additive Cure Pro again created by Tony Lyons. It's, you gotta think of additive as in kind of the adding of negative values, adding of positive values, although this will not go to any values uh, below zero. It's a multiplication, multiplying up and down. So you're adding dark values and then you're adding bright values. So it's kind of broken into two different things, uh, dark and light. You can see the difference of adding this on, bringing back all these here details, again, in bright areas and then in dark areas. So again, this is a really cool tool. And how do we uh, create this or use this? Well, first off, we have the original footage here of this woman on green screen. And I use an IBK color here to basically uh, create a clean plate. And with that clean plate, there's a clean plate input into the additive keyer. There's the foreground input, which is basically the original character. So you have that foreground, the clean plate. The background is the actual background that you're actually going to use. And then what it happens is it basically imprints this dark and light value in here, but you really don't want anything but the hair values to be included. So in this case, I used a key mix based on this mask to only cover the areas of the hair. Okay, it's not perfect, by the way. There's some spill in here still, so don't judge me. Um, you can just use this mask input here to do the same, plug in your mask. But I went ahead and did it with a key mix because I want to show you how to actually export the actual... Um, uh, kind of get the actual channel out of here, the actual alpha channel. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But you can see, just looking at it, it kind of looks like a burn-in. And then from there, you add on to your top. And obviously, like I said, you don't want, you know, areas that are non-hair to be in there because it can create kind of an outline. So once again, I use this uh, Luma Fuse node. These are the uh, Luma tools, by the way. So here is the original actress. Again, even though she has high, high, uh, nice fine hair details, you can see as I kind of do this, you know, you really gotta, you know, use this. So how does this whole thing work? Well, if I go ahead and just turn this to the default, set so knobs to default here, okay. We'll go ahead and just take a look. And right now it's using the clean input, which is this. So it's using this color and the colors and the proximities to establish uh, what it is. You can also just turn on use clean color as clean plate and you can you know go back into your original plate here sample this color now you're just using a plain color here so you can kind of see the difference if I go back to, to the uh, clean plate input there's a little bit difference I, I find the, cle the, the, the uh, clean plate to actually work a little bit better but you do have this option and then you have this option here that's called despill screen color for saturation so this kind of knocks out, uh, this is knocking out that sort of warmth there and kind of putting, uh, keeping this kind of like, see with it off, but if you turn it back on, you sort of get this green hue. Um, so anyway, you have dark and light value. You'll notice dark value has dark value, saturation dark and dark tint. And then the light side has an extra value called the light value background multiplier. You really would never want to multiply darkness or whatever. So this is if you really want to brighten up those highlights. So for instance, I'll go ahead and take the dark values and turn that down for now. You can see the light values, we can crank this up pretty high. It starts to break, you know, after about 1, 1.0 1 or whatever. And we can kind of see this with the back, uh, foreground element put in. So I, I just want to dial this stuff in until, you know, I get to what I think is correct. Now you also can adjust the saturation values. You see it's like desaturated or you can saturate up. You can also give it a tint if you're getting sort of a hue shift there. So again, if you're finding yourself like, you know, if you need to take out some green or something in here, you can go ahead and play with that. And then again, like I said, the light value background multiplier, this is going to actually deal with the multiplication of the background a little bit onto the actual, um, you know, a foreground source here. So you kind of see what it's doing if we go do this. If I go ahead and just kind of take this, you can see this, right, versus the plussing of the value here. So anyway, with that said, you have all these really great options. You need to just play with these a little bit until you see what, in comparison, looks to your original plate. 
So again, I can go ahead and, and take the dark values now, come over here, and you can see if I push this too far, it gets crunchy and nasty, but these values, if I uh, sample them, okay, are never gonna go below the, the value of zero. So you can see no matter how much I push this. Uh, some other uh, additive cures won't do that, so or will do that. So again, you can kind of push this until it breaks, then kind of back it off. And again, same thing here. You can come over here and change the tint of this if you feel that you know you're trying to uh, kind of adjust or pull some magenta out or green. Um, you can kind of adjust that, and then you can also take the darks and actually saturate their values up and so forth. And then of course the the, the whites here. Again, you probably want to go back and look at your original plate as you continue to add this. You, one is a good value to start. You can always dial it down a little bit if you don't think it's too much. And then you have the saturation and then this multiplication of the background. The other cool thing about this is you have a couple options here to break up this via the output difference to RGB met. That's why I did this key mix. Again, you can just use the mask. Uh, but what I want to do is I wanted to export out um, the uh, differences. So you can see outboard difference to RGB. This gives you sort of a difference mat in RGB, but I really like the output difference mat to alpha. And what this does, if we kind of take a look at it, is it, go, it creates an actual alpha image here as we kind of work. And you can see if I take this uh, light value background multiplier, which is actually probably uh, causing a little bit of issues. We can go ahead and play with this a little bit. Again, the sensitivity of this is going to actually have noise. I didn't denoise this at all, but you can kind of kind of play with this a little bit. And how this comes in handy is with this coming down the pipeline, right? You can add this back in to channel here so you can see if I kind of add this in yeah we have some noise up here and so forth and I can mask that out but you can kind of add that information into your alpha in input so now if I shuffle this into the final you can see that I have that additional information there okay that again it's a little bit nasty up here and so forth but you're including this and sometimes when you're dealing with you know uh, additive you know like a DI or colors that's going to request an alpha because they might want to colors might want to like color correct the background of the foreground a little bit make a little bit tweak they'll, they'll ask you to in production to obviously supply an alpha and it's probably a good idea to include that because if they do come in and start grading it they might not be able to pull down this define here detail so that is an option to consider.